Hi, and welcome to this talk about supercharging trial and error for learning complex software applications. I am Damien Masson, a PhD student at the University of Waterloo, and this is work that was done during my internship in the HCI and Visualization Research Group at Autodesk Research in collaboration with Jo Vermelen, George Fitzmaurice, and Justine Mataika. Complex software applications such as AutoCAD, Photoshop, or the 3D design software Fusion 360 that you see here are difficult to learn as they contain thousands of commands and even more ways to combine them. While tutorials might help, many people ignore them, preferring to figure out themselves how to use a new software. As a result, they often jump right in and explore the software's interface, trying out commands as they discover them instead of watching video tutorials or reading manuals. The issue is that this behavior that I will refer to as trial and error is poorly supported in software. In this work, we contribute a framework for trial and error, including a conceptual model and a design space to compare existing approaches and identify opportunities for future research, as well as three techniques targeted at trial and error and that we implemented in Fusion 360. We reviewed and extracted sentences qualifying trial and error from eight observational and diary studies looking at people learning new software applications. We found several benefits of trial and error. Trial and error is often found to perform equally, if not better, than other problem-solving strategies such as using help systems or tutorials. Users are willing to spend more time using trial and error than any other approach, as they feel like they are progressing towards their goal. Trial and error happens directly in the software, saving users from the extra cognitive load and reduced space of going back and forth between the software and help resources. And finally, trial and error allows serendipitous discovery of commands. However, we also found several challenges that a user might face when using trial and error. A trial and error episode might reach a dead end if the relevant command is hidden or disabled, or because the affordances are poor or misleading. Users can face difficulties understanding how to navigate a command when their mental model of the application is incomplete or mistaken. And even when the user is successful, the solution might be approximate and become problematic later on. Finally, the recovery after an unsuccessful attempt can be costly, causing accidental loss of data. To better understand when users face these challenges, we developed a conceptual model of trial and error. We identified four phases during a trial and error episode. These phases are repeated until accomplishing the task or reaching a dead end. The starting point of a trial and error episode is the exploration phase. In this phase, users attempt to find comments that are likely to achieve the desired result. Their strategy is to review labels, icons, and sometimes tooltips. If no relevant comments are found, the episode might end here. Otherwise, we move on to the execution phase. In the execution phase, the goal can be either to learn what the command does with no specific task in mind, or simply achieve a specific goal. Again, the trial and error episode can end here if the user cannot figure out how to operate the command. Otherwise, we move on to the assessment phase. In the assessment phase, users decide if they are satisfied with the result. This often boils down to checking if the result appears correct. Therefore, the solution could be approximate and differ from what an expert would have done. In all cases, if the user is satisfied with the solution, then the trial and error episode is successful. Otherwise, we move on to the recovery phase. In the recovery phase, users try to return to a clean state. This can be done manually or using undo mechanisms, knowing that the recovery can sometimes be difficult or costly. Otherwise, once the prior state is recovered, users can either switch to a different problem-solving strategy, go back to the execution phase if they want to further experiment with the command, or return to the exploration phase to look for a different command and cycle through the phases of trial and error again. With this model, we can think about how previous work impacts trial and error. For example, work on making some commands more salient mostly target the exploration phase. Similarly, the work from Lafreniere et al. offering an option for users to swap an executed command with another is essentially creating a path between recovery and assessment. Following this idea, we developed a design space of tools that help users be more successful with trial and error. In the first dimension, we found that users use trial and error to figure out four different aspects of a software. The user interface, for example, trying to move or hide a panel. A command, as we showed in our previous examples. The parameter of a command. Or, at a higher level, a workflow, which corresponds to a sequence of commands. In our second dimension, we differentiate the moments in which a tool can intervene. 
Here, we use the four phases from our model, with the exception of the assessment phase. Finally, our third dimension differentiates the ways to present the support for trial and error. From simple and obstructive modifications such as altering the interface to opening a separate view. Using these dimensions, we can look at previous tools targeted at software learning and better understand their impact on trial and error. Especially, we identified gaps in the literature and proposed three tools to help users during trial and error episodes Tool Trip, Tool Track, and Tool Taste. Next, I will present these tools and demonstrate their use through a prototype implementation that we developed for the 3D Design Software Fusion 360. ToolTrack keeps track of users' progress during trial and error to prevent them from retrying irrelevant comments or discarding comments too early. We do so by displaying discrete yellow triangles on all comments and parameters that have never been explored. We also show a progress bar on hover to indicate how much of a specific comment has been explored. ToolTrip informs users of possible workflows and let them go on trips in which all the comments necessary to accomplish a goal are highlighted. ToolTrip provides information at a workflow level to show alternative solutions and a comments use cases. We generated trips by mining thousands of workflows from video tutorials posted in forums. We then augmented Fusion 360's tooltips with ToolTrip. Users can select among different workflows involving the command. After selecting one of the trips, the command involved will display a colored badge, and users can look for them to guide their trial and error episode. Finally, Tool Taste lets users rapidly and safely experiment with commands. When right-clicking a command, users can choose between testing the command on a copy of the current document or on an example specifically designed for this command. Modifications can then be merged into the main document or discarded, letting users decide if the command is relevant. In summary, we contribute a framework for trial and error, including a conceptual model and a design space to compare existing approaches and identify opportunities for future research, as well as three techniques targeted at trial and error and that we implemented in Fusion 360. With this research, we hope to inspire researchers to design novel techniques for trial and error. Future work includes finding solutions to the aspects of trial and error that remain poorly supported, such as recovering from interface modifications or workflow. Second, it is unclear how trial and error could be supported during real-time collaboration. Possible directions could be to provide users with a divide-and-conquer approach to explore the interface or identify users based on their expertise. Third, providing support for trial and error across applications remain an open question. Finally, it would be useful to see how people use and integrate our three techniques in their daily workflows. That's the end of this talk. Thank you for your attention and feel free to check out the research paper for more details.